uh, for the holiday season. So now that our placement stitch has run, we're going to go ahead and lay down our batting. Now there's a lot of cool things in our holiday extravaganza. Um, we have a lot of neat stuff over here that I'm excited to show you guys. Now I know you probably did this one with either Drea or Lauren, but we have these beautiful gift card holders that are really neat. Um, and they have their own little buttons. They're held by their buttons and there's... Um, What? Oh. Okay. Sorry, everybody. We've had a little bit of technical difficulties. That's all right. A little bump in the road. No big deal. Um, so as I was saying before, I'm not sure if you caught me or not, but we have a lot of really cool stuff in our holiday um, extravaganza curriculum. And one of those things just happens to be another gift card holder. We have here these ones that fold and they have an, a little elastic holder in the inside. And to secure them, you just fold them up and give them a nice button. So we have those. All right, now our tacking stitch for the batting has run. We're gonna go ahead and remove our design from the machine and we're going to use a pair of sharp curved applique scissors and we're going to trim as close as we can to the tacking stitch line. Um, so uh, in case you missed it, I used a wash away stabilizer and I'm using two layers of this stabilizer so it's a little bit more sturdy for me. So all we're doing right now is going around the entire stocking and trimming as close as we can to the tacking stitch line. Yes. All right, and now that we have trimmed down our batting, here's a little look at what our design looks like. We're gonna go ahead and put it back in the machine and we're going to run our placement stitch for the stocking color. Now again, I am using this blue color, so hopefully you'll be able to see it a little bit better on the screen, but we are going to use this pretty red, corally looking fabric for our stocking color. Now our extravaganza curriculum also comes with a lot of other cool things as well. We have these 3D ornaments, which are really neat. You have a little loop up here to hang with ribbon and 3D wings, which is really nice. Those are beautiful freestanding pieces for your Christmas tree. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to take our red applique and lay it directly on top of our placement stitches. We want to make sure that we are covering them completely. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. Now don't forget this collection um, is running all the way, the sale is running all the way until the end of October. So it's 65% off, originally 99, and it's yours for 35. This is the holiday extravaganza curriculum. Now there's a couple other cool things I wanna share with you guys as well. We have some fun little gingerbread men garland that you can make as well. And you can see a little bit in this one, we have some lace, we have a little bit of, uh, looks like we used organza and some fun cottons, um, and a lot of bright shimmery metallics for that uh, Christmas time. So that would definitely be very cute to hang on your fireplace. So now that the tacking stitch has run for our applique, we're gonna go ahead and remove our hoop from the machine. And we're going to use our sharp scissors again to trim away all your excess fabric close to the tacking stitch line. Now you can feel free to use any color or fabric choices that you desire. We decided to use a plain cotton fabric um, but you can use holiday cotton, decorative cotton. Um, you could use Silk Dubiani if you'd like to. Anything to kind of brighten up your gift card is definitely uh, a plus. So now that I've trimmed away my applique, I'm gonna go ahead, place my hoop back in the machine, and we are going to run the placement stitch for the edges of your stocking. Now for this one, we have a fun printed cotton. I'm not sure if you're 
able to see the printed decorativeness of this cotton on the camera. Um, but we're going to use that as the stocking foot and the little part of the stocking and on the top. So we're going to go ahead and let that run. And while that's running, I want to show you guys one of these other cool things that we also have. Now in this holiday extravaganza collection are these 3D little bags. They're very cute. You can see we have like a little poinsettia right here. Um, and the poinsettia is what is 3D for the 3D standing pieces. We used ribbon and zipper. It's this cute little pouch and they're great. Like this is such a cool idea to do for um, holiday gifts, whether you're stuffing them with, you know, presents like candy and earrings and all that kind of fun stuff. We also have this little green version right here with this fun ribbon. Beautiful flowers for the 3D effect. I think that's really cool. Make for a really cool gift. All right, we just finished the placement stitch for our uh, stocking for the top and the feet. So we're gonna go ahead and place our white fabric over top of our stitches. You wanna be sure to cover those completely. Now again, if you are just coming in, we have these really pretty examples here. We decided to go a little outside of the box this Christmas and do a teal kind of style stocking. Um, these are great for placing gift cards. Maybe you wanna add some suckers, some candy. Uh, maybe you got a cute pair of earrings and you wanted a fancier way to you know, uh, gift the earrings to family members or friends. And they're great. They have these little holes at the top where you can insert the ribbon. And I'll show you this one because this one doesn't have any ribbon. Um, you just place your items inside, fill them with all the goodies, and you're good to go. They're bags. They are just so cute. And you can play around with all sorts of ribbon too. Like we did some red ribbon with the teal. Um, you can even get some like, bring in the teal again, do a little chevron ribbon, a little something fun. Uh, I'm really excited for these. So this will be a great gift for me to give to my family. All right, so we are moving on. We just finished our tacking stitch for the white applique. Before I trim, this is what your design will look like. We're gonna go ahead and take our sharp scissors and we are going to trim our fabric close to the tacking stitch line. Now I've went ahead and did the top of the stocking for us. And we are currently going to be working on the back of the stocking. Now, this is me. The inside of your gift card holder is lined, which I will show you how to do. Um, so you don't have to worry about it being uh, not looking clean or anything like that. We're cleaning it all up. It's going to be a great gift. So again, we're still just trimming away our applique close to the tacking stitch line. Got to get ready for those satin stitches. And our next step in the process is going to be the decorative stitching for our stocking. So I'm going to go ahead and run that in the teal that I'm using as my tacking and placement stitch color because I just really love the fact that we're adding this fun teal color to our Christmas. Christmas stuff. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to let that run. And I want to talk to you a little bit about our Anita's Express shrinky bags because that is our flash sale this week. And I'm really excited about this one because this makes for another great gift. Now our shrinky bags are were, I should say, they were originally $29.95 and they're 50% off. So they're $14.98 until Sunday. That's right, $14.98 until Sunday. And I have a few examples here that I'm really excited to show you. So in case you've never seen our shrinky bags before, 
here's this handy dandy little shrinky bag. And it's cute. You do um, a shrink and uh, a heat and shrink fabric. We do uh, echo stitching to help us make the shrinky effect with the iron. And all you do is you stitch out your design, super easy and simple. I believe these, um, since this is a part of our Anita's Express, each panel, front and back, is roughly under, I think, 12 minutes long. A uh, very quick project, and they're super cute. We line them, so they're fully lined for you. And all you need is your shrinky um, heat and shrink fabric, your fabric of choice, which you wanna make sure that you're not using anything that's too heavy or too light. You kinda want a medium weight material. I know for these, we used a silk dupiani. So maybe you want a silk dupiani. You could also use maybe a cotton fabric. Um, they have these beautiful designs on here. This one is a little fairy on a mushroom, which is kinda cute because it gives off a little tinkerbell with the green. And we also have this one right here, just a little plant leaf, which is super cute. And you have this fun lining on the inside. Now I wanted to show you guys that when you go to make your design, this is what it's gonna look like. And I think that this is just so cool because all you have to do is tap it with the iron and use a little steam. And it looks like this. And I was amazed by it, but I'm also amazed by the little things. So this was pretty cool for me. Um, I think it's also a great gift idea. You can put um, a bunch of stuff in here. I know when I was younger, I used to love getting little bags for birthday parties, filled with like candy and nail polish and all that kind of cute little stuff. So these make for a great little bag. Um, for anything that you have going on, whether you're traveling or say you want to go to the beach and you want to throw your sunglasses in there, um, they're great. But just remember this uh, sale goes until Sunday and what's even better is it's Anita's Express, which means it's a quick and easy project for you. Should keep you under, you know, 45 to 90 minutes. So we love those quick projects. And again, it was 29 95 but it's now 14.98 so if you're interested in this deal don't forget it ends on sunday um well this embroidery is going to take us a little bit so why don't we uh why don't we do a, why don't we do a giveaway let's do a giveaway all right um let's see if you why don't we use the word stocking since we're making a stocking for christmas so comment down below stocking and we're going to pick a winner for our giveaway. Hmm. Hmm? I can't hear you. Um, so for today, you can win a $25 gift card. That is what's on the table. So if you wanna win this, the only thing you have to do is comment stocking down below. Now here's the front of our stocking that I told you previously that we already have um, ready for you guys. It's really cute, it says happy holidays, has some snowflakes on it. And um, our current stocking now, the backing is just gonna be some more snowflakes. So it's gonna be such a cute little gift card holder. Uh, so our winner is Anita Wesley. Wesley? Wes. Okay. All right guys, we have a winner. Ding, 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 Anita Wesley. I hope I said that right. But you are the winner of our $25 gift card. So congratulations on that. Hopefully I said your name correctly. I'm sorry if I didn't. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying this live stitch out with me. Um, I hope you also enjoy some of my other sewing tutorials. I don't know if you've checked out the rest of our YouTube videos, but make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep updated on when we have some fun sewing with the seamstress tutorials for you. Um, we had, I know our last, one of my last ones was the artistic triptych bag. I hope you enjoyed that one with me. It was super fun. 
Um, I love doing these tutorials for you guys. They are great. And we have some great stuff coming up here pretty soon. So I'm excited for that. Now, what do you guys think about this? Comment down below. I'm really curious to see like what your favorite out of the stitch outs is so far. Um, what is your take on teal for Christmas? Uh, sometimes I've considered using pink. I've thought about using pink for decorating my Christmas tree, but most of the time I stick with the classic red and gold. Um, what are your plans this holiday season? Comment below. I'd love to hear them. I'd love to read about it. Now, in case you're tuning back in, I do want to show you again some of the cool stuff that we have for this curriculum. And there's some more fun stuff coming your way here pretty soon. But we do have another gift card holder, which is really exciting. We have this tiny fold it, trifold kind of gift card holder that has the elastic in the center. And you also hand stitch with the button. It's fully lined. And all you need to do is um, I use a seam ripper when I'm opening up the center of my design. So I'll use a seam ripper to get my buttonhole ready and then I will use something like a pen to mark where I want to place my button and that's all you got to do. Pretty easy for that one, but these gift card, um, these gift card holders are great. Uh, 2020 wasn't the best for Christmas gifts, but that doesn't mean 2021 can be twice as good. So. Even if you can't see your loved ones this Christmas, you can always mail them one of these cute little handy dandy cards. I know that that's probably my plan as half of my family's moved to Florida. So I'll definitely be maybe popping a gift card or two in one of these cute little designs. I think the teal is pretty cool. I think it's super bright. I think it's kind of outside the box a little bit. It's a little different than your ordinary green colors. Um, I think it's going to be great. You could match it to the theme of your tree. That is great. That is honestly a great idea. And I mean, if you're thinking about it, these could also be little ornaments for your tree as well. Could just hang them up. Purple is also a great color for Christmas time. I think purple would be great. Maybe purple with like a little bit of gold or maybe even doing like purple and silver. I think purple is a great color as well. If you want to select most things in Las Vegas, you get embellished Christmas for $30 um, well, speaking of Christmas, while we're talking about Christmas, today is your last day to get embellished Christmas at 30% off. Um, I would also love to hear what you guys thought about Embellished Christmas because we played a lot with the teal colors. So tell me what tell me what you think about the Embellished Christmas and did you buy it? Are you thinking about buying it? Um, we played around with a lot of really cool colors with that one. I know it was a fun one to stitch out and it turned out to be such a beautiful quilt. That's for sure. So just don't forget today's the last day to get that collection at 30% off and it is a special edition. So that makes it even better. Um, but yeah, 30% off until the end of today. I also hope that you guys are loving our tutorials as I've been writing some of those as well. Um, our tutorials are super fun. I hope you guys enjoy them as much as I do. They're definitely fun to write. Um, again, just like the Sewing with the Seamstress videos, I love guiding you guys into the right direction. So I surely hope you love my fun take on each um, collection that comes our way. We have a lot of amazing collections coming for you um, in November and December that I'm really excited about. So you've got a lot of good things coming for you.
Embellish Christmas is definitely a fun one. It was really cool to see how our designs and our thought process got put all together for that big special edition. Um, like I said, I just loved the fabric choices. It was a great spin on your average Christmas feel. So while we're still on the topic of embellished Christmas, I think we might as well show you some embellished Christmas. Maybe some of you have, haven't seen it, um, but we have a lot of good stuff for you. So I have a couple versions here. Now our main quilt was a navy quilt, and now it's a beautiful, beautiful quilt, huge quilt, so gorgeous. Ta-da! <laughs> It was a beautiful, beautiful quilt. We have so many like beautiful motifs and sashing, um, with 3D elements that were great too. There was so many 3D elements, motifs, all of it, just so beautiful. Now that's one of our darker versions where we have like uh, darker teals, navies, deeper reds, you know, that kind of um, holiday vibe. But for this one, we went a little lighter and we used white. And we also use some metallic threads too, which I love a good metallic thread for the Christmas time. I just love the silver and the gold. Um, and you can just really play around with that. And these are good for everything. Like I love a good throw pillow and these would be, this would turn into a great throw pillow. So you have this white here with the silver and blue, beautiful tonal work. I love the light blue with it. It's so like snowy Christmas time. And then, we have a brighter version, which is even prettier. Like, look at this. It's such a bright red satin, and we have our little 3D elements, which I think are just so cool that we have those. And then you can see where we played in with the dark teal, te dark teal again, instead of the green, your average green colors. Um, so it just makes it, it makes it different and it's, it's just really pretty. So yeah, don't forget, 30% off until the end of today. It's a great special edition. All right, our embroidery is finished. Um, we're gonna go ahead and remove our design from the hoop because it's time for our lining. Now I'm gonna show you here that this is what our design looks like and here is the back, okay? We are going to flip our hoop over and we are going to take our fabric for the lining. I'm going to do this red. So I'm gonna lay the fabric on top of my stocking. You wanna make sure you cover the stocking completely. And because this is going on the back of the hoop, I am going to tape my um, stocking in place. Now that's another question. I'm always curious. Do you guys prefer temporary adhesive? Do you prefer tape? Like what are some ways that you guys um, stabilize your fabrics? So we now have our lining taped. You can see this is the back of the hoop. And when I turn it around, you can see that it's completely covering the entire stocking. So we're gonna go ahead and insert our design into the machine and gonna let that run. And it's going to run the tacking stitch for our lining. Now these projects are really cool, they're super quick. Um, it's a 10 step project. It doesn't take a lot of material. You can make a ton of them. Um, you could buy fat quarter bundles and do a whole Christmas theme of stocking holders. Um, they're great. Oh, we have a question. Did we back our fabrics? Yes, I am very big on backing my fabrics. I think it makes the fabric a lot stronger and, and stiffer and gives it um, better shape. So I am big on backing my fabrics whenever I can. Absolutely. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my design from the machine. And you can see part of my tape kind of fell off there. But we have our tacking stitch. And just like our regular applique, we're gonna go ahead and um, use a pair of our sharp scissors and we're gonna trim all the way um, to the tacking stitch line. No seam allowance necessary on this one. Like 
Well, it sounds like you guys are just like us. You like all of the things when it comes to placing your lining or any of your materials onto your hoop. I see we love some temporary adhesive, some surgical tape, all the good stuff. Anything to keep our fabric in place. All right, so I finished trimming and now this is what the back of our hoop looks like. And what we're going to do next is a crucial step. So I'm going to go ahead and do a color change. Um, our next step in the process is the satin stitching. Now since we have multiple colors in our stocking, we're going to need to change our thread color at the top and also our bobbin thread color. So I'm going to go ahead and switch. When I run my bobbin, I normally do white. I'm going, to I'm going to switch to the red because this is the color that we are going to run with first. So I'm going to go ahead and swap those. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and run that and it's going to do only the red satin stitch for our stocking. Now this project is a sewing project, so it is not finished in the hoop, but no worries, it's very easy. I'm going to also show you how to piece your stocking together as well. Do we have any more questions? Now aside from what we're working on today, does anybody have um, any other Anita Christmas projects that they're thinking about working on this year? Or how about last year? Did you make any Anita quilts, Christmas quilts, or anything like that for your family members? Um, I'm curious to know which ones are your favorites. And just in case you are tuning in a little bit later, we do have a flash sale going until Sunday. This is our Anita's Express Shrinky Bags. I love our Express collections because they're super quick and easy. I love a good fast project. Um, these bags are 50% off until Sunday. They are $29.95, were $29.95, but now with a 50% off, they're $14.98. And this is a collection that came out in April of 2018. And this is what they look like. Very cute. Um, you start off with your base fabric of choice um, and your heat and shrink. And your machine only has two steps. And it's your echo stitching and your beautiful motif. Uh, for these ones, we chose to match our echo stitching to the fabric. And once you have your panels complete, all you have to do is tap the iron with some steam to your design and it shrinks it. And I made this beautiful little example for you guys today. This is what your panel will look like when you start. And then when you tap it with the iron, here's a little bit of what it would look like when it shrinks. Just really cool. I was very fascinated by this process. I think it's super neat. Um, it kind of reminds me of the shrinky shirts. I don't know if anybody was into those, but. They were kind of itchy, but they were cool. And these bags are really neat because they remind me of that. It's a little bit of a throwback there, but they're fully lined. Um, but yes, yeah, this flash sale, it's great. It's only until Sunday, 50% off. Okay, we have finished running the satin stitch in the red. We're gonna go ahead and color change again. Um, this time we're gonna go with the white. 
Now the cool part about this is our satin stitch is connected to our buttonhole stitch, so that's going to run as well. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to change my bobbin. I'm changing my bobbin um, because this is a wash away stabilizer. So when we're piecing together our um, design, you can kind of see on the edges the color that comes through. And I can kind of show you this. I'm hoping that when I hold it up, you might be able to see. But when you're stitching your design, you can sort of see the back of each panel, if that, I hopefully said that so it makes sense. Um, but we just want to avoid not having any of those clean stitches when we're stitching it together. So I have already threaded and changed my color. We're going to run that. Now again, this is our final step for our back panel, and it's going to be the satin stitching for all of the white, and it's also going to be our buttonhole. Oh, uh, we have a question. Okay. You can use any. You can use any fabric uh, for this that you would like, really. Um, so our question was, what kind of fabric could I use for this project? And yes, we've used cotton, but you can use pretty much anything that you'd like. If you wanted to use a satin, you could bring in some of the satin colors like we did for the embellished Christmas. I'll flip this over. It has this very shiny red, which would be very pretty. Um, you could use a silk dupiani. Maybe you want to go with a felt, maybe a felt look. You could use felt. Um, this project is great because you can pretty much use any material that you um, think fits, which is really fun because your possibilities are endless. So definitely play around with a lot of color. We have another question. Okay, so we are making one full stocking today. Our question was, are we making one stocking or are we making two? Well, we're kind of making both. So our end result is one stocking. This is just one stocking gift card holder, but the file is two, um, there's two files for this project. So this project is not done in the hoop, um, or finished in the hoop, I should say. You have your front file which will be the front of your stocking, the Happy Holidays design. And then you have your back file, which is the one we are running now, which is just your basic little embroidery kind of style design. Um, and what we're going to do is once each of them are finished, we are going to trim them around, trim around the wash away and stitch them together. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this because I'm sure you guys are like, wash away, we're trimming wash away, but yes. So this is the way I prefer. You are more than welcome to do it whatever way that you prefer. I prefer to trim around my wash away and stitch my design together. That way it's not, I don't have to wash it, let it dry, then stitch it. Um, I like to trim it as close as I can to like the tacking stitch line without hurting any of my satin stitches. And when we get to that part, I can show you um, how we're gonna stitch this together. And then I wash it. Because to me, I think it just, it, it makes it a little bit quicker. It's already sewn together. I don't have to worry about the drying process. Um, but you can wash each panel separately, let it dry, and then stitch it together. Do we have any more questions? I hope you guys are enjoying this first live with me. Um, it is my very first live, so I'm very excited to be here with all of you guys today. Um, definitely very excited. I'm sure you could tell by my rosy cheeks that I am so excited to be here. So. Am I what? 
Well, it looks like it's time for another prize. All right. So because teal was such a um, big color throughout this, I'm going to have everybody comment down below teal. And that is how we are going to pick our winner. So comment below teal. And hopefully you will be the next lucky winner for our gift card. Aw, thank you. I am really excited to be here with you guys. I love uh, going through the whole process and guiding you guys along with it. Just like I said before, I love doing my sewing. Sewing with the seamstress stuff, it is just so, so much fun. I love doing it, so very excited. Lauren's watching. Hello, Lauren. So while we're entering, I have one question. Okay, we have another question while we're waiting for our um, winner. Don't forget to comment down below teal so you can win a fancy gift card. Yeah. Someone asked if they could add a stocking. Okay, so our next question is can you add a name to your stocking? And the answer is yes. Now you can merge your designs, um, your fonts, onto your stocking. And if you don't know how to merge, um, I think we have some videos on how to merge your designs. It's quite easy. Um, so I definitely think there's some room on here for you to add a name, or you could even add a couple initials. But all you would have to do is just merge a font from any of your favorite collections, or maybe an Anita's font, um, or any font that you have really it's easy to add that on there so all you would have to do is just finish your stocking i would recommend um maybe putting it on the front and um yeah i think that's great i think adding a name is perfect i think it's a great idea um and yeah oh we have our winner cindy bloom cindy bloom Cindy Bloom, you are our winner for today's gift card. Congratulations. Now we are almost done with the satin stitching for our stocking. And the last little bit is going to be for the buttonhole. Now for this, um, since we're not going to wash it and let it dry and um, have me show you, I'm going to show you my technique on trimming uh, close to the wash away and stitching it together. Now when opening the top of our buttonhole, which I can do this now while we're waiting, is what I do is I usually take a seam ripper you could take scissors if you prefer scissors. I kind of prefer a seam ripper because it's just that perfect edge when we are cutting out the buttonhole. And all I do is poke my seam ripper through and gently guide it through the buttonhole. And you want to, you want to make sure that you're going slow so that you don't um, score any of the satin stitching. Now that's usually how I, um, use the buttonhole. And now I know I'm saying buttonhole, um, but you can add a button if you'd like. Um, and you could also use ribbon. Ribbon is what we are using for ours. Um, and if you would prefer to use a button and you don't want to have two buttonholes on here, you can also, um, while you're stitching out your design, stop your design once it gets to the buttonhole part and the back uh, stocking panel won't have that buttonhole. So that's just a little uh, tip and trick right there in case you want to use a button. Now here is our finished back panel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unhoop this. And like I said before, I used a wash away stabilizer. I used two pieces because I wanted to make sure that it was very sturdy when going through there. I didn't want to have to worry about any like tears or anything. We have batting in here and we also have some satin stitching. So I wanted to make sure that everything was nice and tight in the hoop. Now I'm just going to go ahead and take my sharp pair of applique scissors and I am going to trim all the way around my stocking. 
and you're going to want to trim as close as you can without harming your satin stitches. I hear we have a great tip from the audience, so I definitely, ooh. If you, okay, all right, we have a good tip. If you put a pin on the sides of your buttonhole, on the end of your buttonhole, you won't go too far. Now that's a great tip. That's something that I didn't even think of and I think that's awesome. It's a great idea. And I love hearing your guys' tips and tricks because, you know, I'm always learning. And we're all always learning, so it's always good to hear everybody else's um, tips and tricks when sewing. So if you ever have any more, feel free to comment below so everyone else can learn those too. Um, but that's great. Okay, so now I have this trimmed out. This is my back panel. I am going to go ahead and um, open my buttonhole before I put them together. Now, I have two pieces. I have my front piece and I also have my back piece. Now, all you do is place them right sides together and you can pin or clip these in place if necessary. They are pretty sturdy, so uh, you might be able to get away with not pinning them if you'd like. Um, another tip and trick that I like to use for this one, which I won't be doing for the live, um, is, you know what? I made a little oops, but that's okay because we all, we all make little oopses when we're sewing. So you don't put them right sides together because we are not sewing a garment here. We are sewing a stocking gift card holder. So my silliness, as always, I'm sure you guys do this too. We always run into a little blip in our sewing experiences where we kind of almost run something wrong. Well, now we're gonna make it right, and all you have to do is place your two panels together wrong sides, not right sides, wrong sides together, and pin and clip in place. Now, my little tip and trick that I learned while doing this is using monofilament thread. Um, monofilament thread is great because it's clear, you can't see it. When you're stitching your two pieces together, um, you will see your top stitch and your bobbin. Now, what I like to do is I like to stitch um, with my bobbin as a monofilament and the thread as a monofilament. That way, when on both sides, you can't see if I chose to go with a white thread or if I chose to go with red. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use the white thread that's in my sewing machine right now in hopes that you guys will be able to see it when I'm finished. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch my presser foot from my embroidery to uh, my regu regular sewing foot. And that is if I have enough um, muscle strength to get the embroidery foot off the machine. Does anyone else have trouble with this or is it just me? I'd love to know in the comments below. They are very supportive. <laughs> I would love to hear it. And also you have to love the automatic needle threader if you are lucky enough to have one of those. Do we have a handy tool around here? It's stuck. So I'm just gonna get a handy little screwdriver because um, I need to do a, a couple more push-ups at the gym so that I can uh, get this off of here. But, yeah, we got it, perfect. All right, yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that <laughs> little struggle. Um, okay, so like I said before, um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're putting your pieces wrong sides together. So you can go ahead and pin or clip these in place. And because this is a gift card holder, we are going to stitch around all sides, not the top. The top is going to be open so we can put our suckers, our candy, our earrings, um, gift cards, anything that you wanna stuff these with. Um, so all you're gonna do is you're gonna start from the top and you're going to stitch all the way around, okay? 
So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this. You may notice I'm going to leave the arm of my embroidery machine on. I think that's okay for this project as our stocking is really little. So you can go ahead um, and stitch. And what we're going to do for this project is we are going to use our satin stitching as a guide. So we're not going to stitch directly on the satin. We are going to stitch just inside that satin stitch, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and run my machine. Oh, I also forgot that I need to change it to the sewing feature. Let's do that. Alrighty. So we're going to go ahead and stitch around our design. It's a little tough. You might have to push it a little bit. Go as slow as you need to. And you're just going to stitch around all sides until you get to the top and we're going to leave the top open for all of our gifts. Now, like I said before, a good tip and trick for this section is to use a monofilament thread with a monofilament bobbin. Um, that is my go-to just so you don't have to see the stitches, but if you don't mind um, seeing the stitches, then you're definitely good to go. But we are using a white for this demonstration just so um, you can see on top of the red where I sewed my stuff together. We have a question. Yes, so monofilament um, thread can be used as a bobbin. Uh, one of my little tips that I like to do is wind my bobbin up a little bit by hand with my monofilament thread. And then you're going to use a piece of tape and lay the top part of um, the thread that you had just wound on top of the bobbin and tape it in place. And that's honestly how I get my monofilament thread um, to stay. I think it's a great um, trick to learn, especially when you're doing things like this, just when you don't want to see those stitches. Um, but yeah, you can definitely use monofilament thread for your bobbin and the top thread. All right, now our little gift card holder is almost complete. We have sewn it in place with the wrong sides together, not right sides together. Um, so now all you have to do is place your ribbon. We're gonna do a red ribbon for this one. Um, you can honestly do the ribbon any length that you like. Um, this is about as long as I'm gonna cut my ribbon. And all you have to do is stuff it through the little buttonhole. And sometimes I like to either use a safety pin um, as a guide or just use my seam ripper if it's a little tough. And there you are. And all you got to do is just tie your little ribbon in place. Um, and before you add your ribbon, if you're more comfortable, you can go ahead and wash the wash away away from the edges of your design. Um, and it'll look more so like this when it's at the end. Whoop. You probably can't really tell too much um, from the camera with the wash away, but I do still have the wash away on here. Um, like I said before, this is something that I prefer to do, but you can do it either way. You can wash your panels now, um, or you can wash them at the end. I just prefer to do it at the end as it makes the process go a little bit quicker. My item is already complete and I can just let it dry. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed this fun live with me today. Um, don't forget our holiday extravaganza curriculum is on sale until the end of the month. Um, it was $99 and it's now all yours for $35. And we have some really great projects coming up um, to show you even more cool stuff. Uh, don't forget about our other gift card holders or other little satchels or garland you could hang um, on your fireplace or just around your house. I hope you love these stocking gift card holders because I'm definitely going to be using these probably in this teal because I love it. Um, but before I head off, do we have any more questions? Hey, first thing, how much Jacob enjoyed this video and how great of a job he's done. Five for the next one next week. 
Um, thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate the support. I was a little nervous and I'm sure you can probably tell because I get these like pink little rosy cheeks when I'm doing my videos. Um, but I really uh, am so thankful for all the support. I hope you guys had so much fun and don't forget to tune in next week because we have even more holiday extravaganza curriculum things to show you. Um, so definitely make sure you tune in for our next educator. We have any more questions? Alrighty. Well, thank you guys so much again for tuning in with me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much